Welcome back to my garage. We'll do a quick temporary fix of our little exhaust problem and jump straight into testing of the engine, increasing boost. without me or the brake stalling it so I had to abort and check things seems like nothing's wrong and it starts right up again I've been playing around with the boost controller a bit now and it doesn't seem like it's doing much like it's there's some slight variations in boost but not much we're seeing mostly high 14 low 15 numbers kind of consistently it's a wide power spread though it might seem like the leak this thing can provide is not enough of a leak to uh, to increase pressure further should we take our chances and remove it would be interesting to unhook the line altogether and see how much boost it makes then dangerous though we'll have to keep a close eye on it first test without the controller just this large leak in the hose. Let's see where that takes us and if not enough we'll remove the hose altogether. Maybe start adding pressure to the other side of the membrane. It's starting to get interesting now. We're above one bar of boost and we saw 16.6 .6 horsepower. If my exhaust extraction system seemed to be inadequate before, it became immediately apparent now. It's even started crumbling from the heat. We need to find a better solution to continue testing. I'm letting it run and I'm wearing the mask because the room is still fogged up. My exhaust extraction fan is mounted here on the wall behind my nurture dyno. Air has to travel through this maze of uh, connections and junctions between different size tubing to get to my extraction point. I think moving the pump from the wall and up to the roof here, that's smarter. I run a line through the window and then a straight shot down to the engine. I need to source some nice large diameter metal tubing. A room fogged up with exhaust is certainly not good for me and probably not good for power either. I'm on it. Test running a wider lens to see if that works better out here. And higher exposure. This is around as wide as I could go with a 50 millimeter. This is maximum with this one. Proper wide shots. The out of focus areas look better with this one too. Especially light sources. As I open up the aperture, the other one makes more of a diamond shape in the in light sources. Not this one. Great. That's about as close as I can go for close focus. 
without tie offers. Let's see how it performs with my low value achromatic tie offer. I think that's about the distance. Lots of vignetting though. Let's throw on something thinner and stronger. That's closer. Let's try even stronger. That's close. Last one. I had to change the subject here. That's close focus for you. Notice how large the light sources in the background are now. I think I like 35mm just a tiny bit better than 50 And this one is sharp enough down to f1.8 versus f4 for the other one. Awesome. Tubing. And this being the night shift means we can have some rum. Finally. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN protects you by creating a tunnel your data can travel in so no one can spy on you and steal that data. With 5000 plus servers around the world, you can appear to be from wherever you want. That comes in handy for some streaming services and games and stuff. Enables you to watch and play stuff that might not be available at the location you're currently at. Or at your home. There's more though. NordPass takes care of storing your passwords for you safely so you don't have to remember them all. NordLocker, safe encrypted cloud storage and threat protection, a new NordVPN feature. Just like I have to wear all this stuff to protect myself from the relatively hostile environment I've created for myself out here. Threat protection helps protect you on the internet from the relatively hostile environment out there. Threat protection blocks trackers, blocks malicious and intrusive ads, blocks harmful websites and protects from malware. Threat protection will be a feature within the VPN application for free, no additional cost. Just like I recommend you wear stuff like this, I recommend you try threat protection. You won't regret it. It's available for Windows and you can download the macOS app from the NordVPN site. Head to NordVPN slash Two Stroke Stuffing and use the code Two Stroke Stuffing for an exclusive deal. It's risk free thanks to their 30 day money back guarantee. Thank you NordVPN. It really ties the room together. Years of oil down there. <laughs> But does it suck? Yes, it does. Real test tomorrow morning. It's morning, we're waiting for the coolant to heat up so we can start testing. Let's talk a little bit about the process here. This is the crank and this is the piston. This is the cylinder. This is the combustion chamber. Our goal is to create as much force as possible, pushing down on the piston at the right time. There's three main contenders to achieving that. One, how much fresh mix we stuff into the cylinder before it gets compressed by the piston. Here, the volume of this chamber determines how much the fresh mix is being compressed and at what point this spark plug ignites the mixture. This system has a static compression, but the density of the mixture in here before it gets compressed determines the dynamic compression in here. What we're doing now is raising compression in a way. The higher the compression in here, the more turbulence and the faster the mixture will burn. If ignition timing is too retarded, peak pressure might occur around top dead center and that's no good. All the force will just try to compress the conrod. We want this to happen say around here at the point where the piston has most leverage on the crankshaft we need to find a good compromise between not too much boost so we blow the whole thing rich enough mixture to not cause detonation and igniting that mixture at the right point as of now 
These are all unknowns. Ignition timing might still be too retarded. The mixture might be too rich. And we don't know about boost yet. Plan now is to just increase boost until something breaks. If it doesn't, we'll start increasing ignition timing. When we reach a point of diminishing returns, we'll start leaning down the mixture. The path ahead is unknown. Destruction is inevitable though. If you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. <laughs> Wait again. The next step now is to unplug this all together to line to the wastegate. Then it'll be just the spring pressure. This is what I did when I decided to get that boost controller. We'll take it really easy now. I'll just plug up this line. There's something not quite right here. I think we're having some ignition trouble. I'm seeing interference on the gauge here, which might mean there's uh, it's not firing. I cleaned the spark plug. I haven't got any new ones. I'll have to get some later. Let's try with the line hooked up again. ignition timing slipped again. I don't know how well you will pick this up but uh, I can move the ignition trigger wheel independent of the pulley here. We were making more power today than yesterday with the same settings which makes me think and now the timing is too retarded which makes me think I should retard the timing some. We'll need to play with that tomorrow and add more boost. We'll end this one here. We're making good power and I found the problem. I'm pretty sure we won't be short on videos ending in disaster. See you next time. <laughs>